Welcome to Spotlight ETSU. Today, the spotlight shines on ETSU student Ryan Renfro and nature man Randy Nature. Our first guest is a North Carolina native who shines in radio, television, and film. Welcome to Spotlight, Ryan. Thank you for having me. Nice to have you. Um, so, you are an ETSU student in the, you're a mass communication major in radio, TV, film. That is correct. And how did you decide you wanted to major in RTDF? I really want to get into film when I get older, so this was, I guess, step number one. That makes a lot of yeah, sense. Exactly. <laughs> what year are you in? Uh, I'm a sophomore. Oh, so you just like started. Again, for like the third time back in school. Are you completing multiple degrees or are you just working on the same no, one? No, it's oh, okay. like, let's go to school, let's not go to school, and then back. Have you forth. been making films when in the periods where you're not oh, in yeah. school? Yes. Even before I started for the first time. What kinds of films do you make? Terrible, low budget production values. Oh, cool. Terrible. With all your friends yes. as actors, yes. and you have to pay them with pizza. And no, I don't even pay them. Don't no. <laughs> we don't even bother with no. that. Um, you're on the show partly to talk about, we're going to come back to your films. We're going to talk That's about fine. all your artsy stuff, but um, you're also the station manager for the Edge radio station. That is correct, also. Is that correct, also? I was, yeah. <laughs> thought it, yeah, we'll go with that. The radio station is sort of not operational totally right now? Uh, it's just going through a phase, a transitional phase, to where we have new software, and the new software has kind of thrown us off where we didn't know it was going to throw. We had an unexpected bump. Okay, so Edge, the Edge, is it's a student-run radio station. Yes. So all, all the programming, all of that, all the DJs are all students. Yes. And... It, you guys were only streaming online at one point. You guys broadcast over the air? Uh, no, it's just still only it's online. It's still online, but and right now, not really much to listen to because you guys are sort of working up the kinks. Just music. Okay, so what's up with the, what's up with this software? Um, I hear it's amazing. It is. And it's it was super expensive. Oh, yes. And it took some guy from Detroit to train you how to use it. Yeah, he, had to, he came all the way down from Michigan, told us, he sat down for like eight hours and went through all the ins and outs. Like, it's a very intricate, piece of equipment. What does it basically do? Um, say you've just got our library of music, it cycles through that based on a calendar or a, a schedule that you build based yeah. on you've got so much hours during the day where we're just playing music and mm -hmm. we're having uh, DJs talk so we have to break up uh, we have to play this song here, this song, and they're all in their categories. So we right. play this one here, this one here, and then a student will talk, and then we'll play you know, a, a commercial or a PSA or something like that. Well, when we started playing the music, we were noticing we have all these, just these silences at the end of songs where stuff's not correct and done, so we've got to start, start from scratch to you fix to, like, everything. You reschedule yes. your entire oh, program. Oh, yes. Yeah, it, it completely threw us off guard. So tedious. All the work is Very. on the front end to make the whole video. So basically what I'm hearing you say is with this software, there is no need for DJs at all ever. Oh no, yeah, you still have to have a DJ. <laughs> it's just a matter of uh, how you schedule your DJs to talk. Well, oh, you could actually, um, you could pre-record, yeah, yeah right. you could pre-record stuff if you wanted, but the whole purpose of the radio station is to train kids to um, you know, find their voice on the air. Mm -hmm. um, get confidence and really just learn how to um, operate live. You know, it's working the board, you're watching your music and just kind of figuring out, okay, this is how all this works and I gotta get my timing and all the other stuff. So I always wonder if there's like, so there are people who have radio voices, like you have a nice radio voice. Thank you. Can you be in radio if you don't have a good radio voice? Well, if you are in the intro class, you have to be at least for, <laughs> it's part of your requirement. Right? But there are kids who can go in there and think, I don't really have a radio voice, and then they find their radio voice. They try different things out. We encourage, you know, do a wacky voice, make a, make a character, you know, find some, com you know, be comfortable with it, and yet also, you know, experiment, you know, get outside of your comfort level. Oh, so partly we're learning the technology and partly we're learning how to voice act a little bit? If you want, yeah. There are a lot of kids that are actually, they're especially in my intro class, that were, you know, I want to be a voice actor, so put them on the radio, perfect. And they're great at it? Some or of them, yes. Learning yes. to be great Yes, at it. exactly. It's always, you always got to uh, put your best foot forward, I don't know, some... Your best voice forward, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So that's super interesting. So what is basically the, so right now you're sort of like working out the kinks in your software or whatever else, but what are the sort of the long range plans for the edge? Like what kind of program are you guys interested in putting on and what historically has the programming been on the edge and whatever? So what are the plans for the station? Um, to get all of our, you know, get the intro kids back in so that we have from eight o'clock in the morning to eight at night, we have uh, two hour shifts for your intro DJs and they can kind of bring 
you know, whatever you do, your regular stuff, you, there's a certain thing you have to do as far as what you talk about, but they can also break in with, uh, uh, we want to talk about this entertainment news, or I really like this awareness, things like that. Mm. And then from 8 at night to midnight, we have uh, what's called our specialty shows, where our past DJs who have gone through the classes and gone through their training have kind of found what kind of shows they want to bring in. We, you know, we had uh, Justin Mullins and his yeah. infamous freak show. Yes. Um, I do one that's a political satire show called AMN. Uh, we have August Electric, just all kinds of electronic and hip-hop music. Uh, maybe not so hip-hop, the uh, techno. I don't then, even know what any of that is. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, it's so it's like a dance party. Kind of, sort of, yeah. The edge. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, it's where we play a lot of our um, uh, genre stricter, sort of niche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like college radio, but kind of like you know, pick your one genre. That's what you're going to play for this block instead of having you know just an amalgamation of everything throughout the day. Amalgamation. Thank you for that word. Oh, and you're yeah, the first guest in like five seasons to use that word on the air. Um, so, you know, so if you watch movies and whatnot, there's sort of this culture of college radio that's like edgy and underground and sort of rebelling against the administration and whatever else. And is that sort of no. what you get? No, not at all. I to wish, be clear. I wish we had We're an edgier, yes. That. Well, I <laughs> wish we It is called The Edge, ironically, yes. which is not yes. edgy at all. Well, it's not that we can't be, it's just that we haven't been, or, you know, like we were talking about Justin, I think he tries to do that, but yeah. he pushes the boundaries too far. Right. Because as much as we are, you know, we're still the college radio, we still have a lot of freedom, we still want to rebel and do all this, we still have to at least, even though we are being monitored by the FCC, we want to, you know, pretend and, well, not pretend, but we want to make sure that we are because you are training for uh, going out in the field where you really will be scrutinized by the FCC. Right. So we still need to at least, all right, maybe they're not closely monitoring, uh, monitor, excuse me, monitoring us, but we still need to pretend that they are so that we're getting, you so know. So know how to act when yeah, we're exactly. in like real life. Oh, so can we, our students, when they finish the radio TV film program, can they go out and be on the radio and oh, absolutely. get jobs and whatnot? We have two students um, that are in the radio TV and the school here that also work in radio stations, um, one in the area and one in Greenville, I think. That's in the area. That's still in the area. I know, but like, but in, yeah, 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 yeah. not the immediate area. area, yeah. And what kind of radio, do they, do they talk? Are they DJs? Like, uh, what do they do? I know for a fact one of them is a DJ, and I think the other one is as well, but I'm, I'm not going to say for sure. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. And we can, and we learn stuff like how to read the news and all that. And our instructors are on the radio. I drive in, right, and I hear Crystal Carter yes. reading the news, and then there's another guy I feel like. Mm, anyway. It's possible, maybe before my time. Maybe, but I'm like, oh yeah, these are people teaching our students how to be on the radio, and they totally are, and so that's really, a, so what, to what value do you think that that has for, as a student, having people teaching you classes who are actually practicing in the profession that they're trying to teach you? Does that matter to you? Is that important to students? Uh, <laughs> sure, but yeah, especially the kids that are going into the radio, because not everybody in the program, you know, wants to be on the radio. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. But... For those that really want to be, you know, they want to get grounded in the radio, they, that's what they're here to do. I think it does help a lot to, you know, to, hey, oh, that's my professor, you know, I'll listen to him on the radio, and then I'll go and listen to him in class. So it's like, you know, whenever they're telling me stuff about the radio, I will really listen because they're speaking from experience. Right, so lends a certain amount of credibility to the education. You are not a radio guy, though. That's not, like, your particular aspiration. You do it. You no, just, I, I you enjoy it a lot. Oh, do you? Yeah, I mean, I, that's just the like only a reason. Media yeah, a guy. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Like I, like I said, I do my show, <clears> well, not this semester, but, you know, in the past and want to get the show back and going again. But I mean, it's just fun to get on the radio and talk. I mean, okay. It's like a vent, you know, you, especially like I said, it's the political satire. So you see something in the news that makes you angry, you go in there, you put a spin on it and you vent. And it's ridiculous. It is. You need to let us know when that show comes back on the air because I'm sure it would delight me. Oh yes. Tremendously, but mostly you fancy yourself a filmmaker. I do. And so you have these <laughs> delightful little low-budget films you make. What, were you shooting them on your iPhone? Like, what are you doing? Uh, no, I, the first camera I had was a uh, Sony Hi8, no, Digital 8, which is still just, you know, the old VHS tapes, kind of VHS tapes, like the, the 8 millimeter. I didn't think so. you were old enough to know what a VHS was. Oh, yes. Oh, that's awesome. That's exciting. Okay. So you had, that was like your first camera. What was the first movie you ever made? Uh, a Valenius Wedding. We made up a title and everything. It was a senior project for my drama class. It was pick an aspect of something, so we chose filmmaking and we made a silent film. 
It was a silent film. Yes, and it was the typical, you know, we had a dastardly villain with a monocle and we And put a mustache. A, oh, yes. Yes. And we even made our own continuity error where uh, one shot he takes the mustache off and doesn't have it on <laughs> and everything else. And we had a girl tied up on railroad tracks. And then Very obviously, yes, whiplash. yeah. And I saved her, but it's the most uncharismatic saving her just because I was kind of shy. So I just kind of like help her. Like, there you go. You're good. There, so, like, all right. Gingerly, like. Yeah, you're saying. And I stepped on a rope and she almost fell over there. She was still tied up and everything. So very clumsy. No, no second takes or anything. No, not at all. And so that was just you being a bad actor and oh, not yes. written into the character. Oh at yes. All. Well, it was, like I said, it was just there was no dialogue except for we're going to film it and then put in the captions of you know watch out for the train that comes later. Right. And all this stuff like that. Just typical melodrama. And so what have you made lately? Uh, recently, I did film jockeys, which is kind of a story I'd wanted to do for a while. I did it for my uh, video film techniques. Tech, excuse me, techniques class last semester. Um, just story of like kids who want to make films, but it's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind it's of like personal. It's like a meta film, so you made a film about making films. Yeah, and it's kind of a personal story just about like being in a small town and having to rely on people that, uh, you know, they want to make films with you and they're kind of interested, but only up to a point. You know, they're not as interested as you are, but they still will kind of like, all right, I'll give you some of my time to make a film. And it's just, it's very hard to be a, a, a small time yeah. amateur filmmaker and really still want to go forward. Right, with you have dream. no resources and you've got to like make resources out of like people who are just like willing to do you a favor yes. kind of a thing. Um, so the Made in East Tennessee Festival is coming up in on the 8th of April. Yes. Is Are you showing anything yes. at that festival? Yes, film jockeys will so be at the festival. Yeah. Film jockeys will be at the festival. That's exciting. Is that, that it's, and are you, uh, do people make films together? Like, are they like co, like when you write papers, sometimes you have co-authors, you have co-filmmakers, or is it really just hard to collaborate with somebody when you have a specific vision for what you want a film to look like? It all depends because uh, now that Martin, and, uh, you know, he's wanting to do the uh, the film club here where right. we're just taking all the filmmakers who are wanting to make films. So, uh, you know, we're wanting to do kind of, um, I want to say analogy, but that's not the word. Uh, what are you getting at? Yeah, yeah. Just, for, <laughs> just everyone has that makes their own film within a film kind of a thing. So gotcha. for that first film, we wouldn't be stepping over anyone's toes or kind of say you have your own thing to do whatever you want. Right. But then later on, when you you know you start meeting more and more people around here, you kind of look for all right, who kind of closely resembles my techniques or you know who kind of like I like their style. Maybe right. I want them to do this or be in that. And it's just so then we start building collaborative yeah, relationships yeah, yeah. once we sort of like figure out who we are as filmmakers and whatever else, and then we can sort of form bonds with people. So do you guys act in each other's films and whatnot? I did. Uh, I acted one in, uh, talked about Justin Mullins earlier. Right. I acted in one of his last semester. I'm acting in one now. Uh, it was weird. I was a crazy backwoods religious nut in one movie, and then uh, Jason here had me act in his where I was like the, the leader of rehab so I was like oh that's what happened I went I went to rehab and then I went fell off the wagon and went out and in the woods or went something bananas yeah, exactly. or whatever I made my own character backstories so weirdness like weird people and I think there's a certain sort of type of person that goes into like wanting to make films my understanding is just like sort of a weird guy nature somebody Randy guy running oh, yeah, around yeah, here yeah, who's yeah, like yeah. a freaking turns up in people's films and whatnot we're apparently going to talk to him later. So you should warn me. Well, is there anything I, I should I know about him before? I don't envy you at all. You don't envy no. me. You know, is there anything that I should know before I speak to him? Just love nature as much. Like try to match his nature uh, passion. I don't think that I can no do one that. Can. No one can. Else. Well, Ryan, it has been delightful to talk to you. So when do we expect the radio station to come back up? It's be uh, excuse me the fall. I Definitely mean, we're coming the fall. back in the fall, and we're wanting to have a kind of uh, bash. Like we're still planning on something like not not in a concert or anything, but like a kind of a big to do, I guess. Uh, we're still planning it, but like a big, you know, make it a big celebration. Oh, like, that's we're so back. exciting! We're, we're gone, but now we're back, so and you're we're back have to for keep good. Us posted on that. Definitely, yeah. it has been just tremendously delightful to talk to you. Hope right. to run into you at some point again in the building here. Um, we're going to take a small break here, not for too long, and we're going to come back with Randy Nature. Is that what I said his name was? I think so. Yes. I think so. So some weird guy. So we're going to take a break. And we will be right back on Spotlight ETSU. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him opening his own clothing store at the age of 18? One in 138,000. 
excited to be a part of pop culture, he packed for the big city. The odds of finding someone to invest in his vision? One in 4.5 million. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. <laughs> this can't be happening. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. <laughs> Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Welcome back to Spotlight. Our second guest today is Nature Man, Randy Nature. Hi, Randy Nature. Hey, hey, how you doing? Good to be on, good to be on the show. You having fun? <laughs> um, I'm having fun. I'm, yeah, I, I don't know if anybody's pointed this out to you, but you haven't quite buttoned your cardigan. Directly. That's cool, it's natural. Is it's it, natural. Is it, so this is just consistent with nature. So you're a nature yeah. man. Uh, nature uh, enthusiast. Ex expert, extraordinaire. E expert, guy. extraordinaire guy. And where did you get your nature expert credentials from? Did you uh, go to like nature school or? Yeah, well, it's, yeah, I've graduated at NU, uh, Nature University. <laughs> um, you, I don't know. A lot of people haven't heard of it. That's no. pretty, pretty. Uh, is it an accredited institution or uh, for in the nature realm? Yes. Oh, I the, see. As far as the nature underground, it's kind of. Oh, so it's a sort of an alternative sort of University of Phoenix type thing for uh -huh. nature. Uh -huh. I got you. Is it online? Uh, no, no. You got. Uh, it's in the woods. Oh, it's in you the gotta, woods. I mean, you got to go out in nature. You got to learn about nature in nature. That would be ironic well, <sighs> if it were online. They should start an online program. Just uh, throwing that out there. I'll run that by. I'm a well-known alumni. In you, go Beavers. Go beavers, beavers, because beavers are nature. They're in natural. Nature, they are natural, unless they're genetically modified. Uh, we won't talk about uh, genetic modified medications. So, so, what, so what do you do exactly? What, what does a nature expert do? I don't know. Uh, I just uh, I'm here to tell people about nature. Uh, I just want to talk about some nature with kids and uh, adults, people. I'm not just humans. Yeah, just people that need to learn to respect nature. Uh, don't cut down trees. Uh, don't smoke in nature. Uh, so I can don't smoke, burn nature. Don't burn, so I can I can smoke in buildings. Yeah, keep and it, burn buildings. Just keep it inside. Just keep it in, keep, keep it out of nature. Inside, keep it out of nature. Yeah. Okay, because what what happens to nature if I smoke in nature? Uh, well, you get you get birds with emphysema. You get <laughs> uh, you get uh, deers eating cigarette butts. It's just it's not bad for it's just it's bad like for everybody. It's like an actual problem. That would be terrible if that were an actual problem. Uh, yeah, so we worry about these things. We worry about the deers and the birds getting emphysema. Yes. And well, you, the deers eat cigarette butts, the birds get emphysema. Oh, I think that's what I said. Okay. Okay, just checking, so we're on the same page. So yeah. um, that, so you basically teach people about nature. I, I try. I what I is try. your favorite thing about nature, Randy Nature? I just love nature. I love everything. I love animals. Could, could I you, love uh, could trees. You, could you, do you have a favorite type of tree? Uh, poplar. Because it's the most popular of the trees. Wow, so that was a pun. I don't know what those are. I don't but know, because they're not natural, right? I guess. You know what's also not natural? Those sunglasses. Well, these are my nature glasses, and see, I have bad vision, but then you get out in the sun, it's too bright, and you just put it down, problem solved. I bet the ladies love that. Uh, some of them do. Some of them have also <laughs> told me to go away. Why are you staring at me? I don't want to be on this camera. Oh, don't, don't. so wait, camera? So you're running around and you're taking videos of nature? Well, yeah, because I mean, you can't just stand around and talk talk about nature in front of uh, like a black screen or something. I mean, this is okay for this, but this is not okay for nature. Right. Because you can't really. There's no nature here, so I could say, Hey guys, uh, don't smoke cigarettes outside because of uh, birds get emphysema. <laughs> 
the message doesn't translate that well. Right, no, you're right. It's out of context. And so it's de definitely more compelling if you are actually in nature with the birds, with definitely. emphysema. I'm just going to flip these down. You, you know, do you know what? You be, feel as natural as you want. Okay. okay, that's important to me. So basically, do you make like educational nature films? Oh, absolutely. So just, that's what you do. Just want to inform people about nature, and nature can be found everywhere. Uh, mostly in nature. Though. Mostly in nature, uh, right. where you go off, and then there's like a town, and there's like a road, and then you just have nature. It's just like on a, the side of the road. It's just there. You see grass. You see ground squirrels, chucks, woodchucks. Ground squirrel trees, chucks. leaves, just nature. Dirt. Dirt. Dirt, the dead guy in a ditch? Well, uh, it's not natural, but he, he'd be there in He's nature. He's natural. Naturally dead. If he died of natural causes. That's true. Assumingly. So, um, ha have you made any videos that we might be able to see at some point? Like, are they, like, what are they about? Do you have a series? Is like an encyclopedia of nature videos? Is it so, tell, tell me. Well, definitely, yeah. I got one video now that I'm working on, well, that I finished that's telling about, if you go to a small town, you can find nature there. You don't have to be out in nature to find nature. Wait. Nature is everywhere. Oh, so it's a, it's a, it's a nature appreciation video. Exactly. And okay. Then as I go along, I will find more uh, things to teach people about nature, because like I said, I'm just, I'm here to educate. It's just natural, so. <laughs> So what what, do you, what are you hoping your next video project is going to be? Uh, well, I want to talk about squirrels. Spr I want to get specifically. It, yeah, that I'm trying to get an interview with squirrels uh, on this campus. Uh, they're very fast. They have a they have a Facebook page. You know? They do, and they have a Twitter, and I follow them on Twitter. Um, the squirrels, but uh, I'm trying to get an interview. About, exactly. Uh, they've lost their nuts from the winter. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to have to look at the cigarette butts that the deer have to deal with. Uh, <laughs> they people run them over all the time. It's, it's not natural to run over a squirrel. Just stop running over the squirrels. Stop running over the squirrels. Public service announcement from Randy Nature. It's very true. It's nature service announcement. There you go. From Randy Nature. So, um, have you ever been to Michigan? I have not. Okay, so let me talk about the squirrels, if I may, in Michigan. So I know you want to get an interview with one, and I feel like maybe you want to consider interviewing a Michigan squirrel because they're black and um, approximately the size of house cats. I think I have seen, now you, you mentioned the uh, the blackness of the squirrels. I already know what you're talking about you now. See, so you've seen yes, the, yes, the, yes. the black squirrels yes. as opposed to the little like, grayish brown squirrels. They're the size yes. of cats, Randy Nature. I don't think you appreciate the gravity of a giant cat sized squirrel. I do, unless. I do if they like to have their belly rub and they play with catnip like this cat. Do they do this at all? Yeah, I, you know what? I didn't actually interact so much with the squirrels. I don't think I speak squirrel. Do you speak squirrel? Do well, they speak English? I mean, I don't understand how this works. So how do you Well, no, no, no one speaks squirrel except for a squirrel. You oh, just got to okay. learn to meet them on their level and you just got to try different things, you know, find out whether they're not comfortable with having their tail uh, pulled or if they're comfortable uh, eating. Would you be comfortable having your tail pulled? That sounds very unnatural to me. Well, I don't have a tail, so I mean. That would be. Unnatural. Yes. So, I don't know. So do you, I mean, do squirrels like their bellies rub? Do they tweet about that? Well, the last time I tried to do that, scratch me. So. Mm, did you get rabies? Uh, not that I know of. Are you up to date on your shots? Doc, I don't go to the doctor. Oh, because that's. It's not natural. Not natural. No. But rabies is. No, I eat uh, only reeds. <laughs> and um, if I get poison ivy, you just scratch it because it feels natural. <laughs> so no, like, calamine lotion or. No. Anything like that. I, I imagine you get poison ivy a lot if you're spending. I live in a constant state of I don't have or I do have poison <laughs> ivy. Those are just two. I either Natural don't or don't have it. Yes. For you, is that un, does that interfere with your appreciation of nature? Not at all. And it doesn't inhibit you from making your educational videos and things like nope. this. No. Poison ivy is just natural. If you grab on or you rub against a poison ivy plant, you're gonna get poison ivy. <laughs> Kids, remember that. Is is that something you have to teach people that? If you touch poison ivy, they'll get poison ivy? So some people don't get it, though. Really? So you just got to see if you're going to get it, you might as well go up and just touch it and find out early on if you're going to get it. That way you know what's going to happen for the rest of your life. I think, I think odds-wise, you're going to get it. Most of the time. I've known people who don't get it, though. Really? Uh, yeah. That seems unnatural to me. It's, well, I'm envious of them, but... I, I cannot say that I blame you at all for that. <laughs> so... Um, what, what, do you have like a big mission, like aside from educating people about nature, like what do you think is going to help? Is it going to help nature in some way for people to know about nature? Like what do you want people, why do you want people to know about nature? Uh, well, we're just preventing loss of nature. Oh, So I see. we just don't want uh, man's destruction of nature. And I just, I just say man as an overall maybe humans. Humans, maybe that's which a I'm better a human, word. But I've learned to appreciate nature. And if people could learn to appreciate nature as much as I have, you don't have things like deep 
the word where they take the woods away in Amazon. Um, De deforestation? That one. That You should probably uh, learn that word. That's okay. As a nature guy. That's okay. As an alleged expert. Well, I'm an expert. I know what it is. I just don't know how to pronounce it. Oh, I see. There we go. Um, with that one, uh, the, the, the pet population don't have it running wild. You get your paid pet sprayed or neutraled. Sp sp um, spayed, spayed and neutered. Okay. You, you never watch The Price is Right? You don't have to be big shots because oh. you're on camera now. Oh, okay. okay. You know what? I don't um, want to bust up your flow, Randy. Mr. Thank you, Nature. because that wouldn't be natural. It, well, you're right. Okay. I have to concede that, that point. So basically, you want people to take care of nature. Exactly. Nature is our friend. We come from nature. If you look, a book told me we come from nature. A, a, book a long line of <laughs> years and years. And so we just want to treat our nature like our friend because it's natural. And you want to be part of nature. You want to enjoy nature because you're from nature. Okay, well, um, my thought, well, I, I think that, you know, conservation and being environmentally conscious are all really important. So what about the poison ivy and the stuff and the raccoons and spiders? Uh, well. Which are not awesome. They're not, but. Snakes. Well. Ticks. I, I like snakes. Lice. I don't like ticks. But those are just things that were um, evolved. Mm -hmm. from whatever they evolved from, and they're here now, Yeah. and we can't do anything about them. Well, you can kill them. We can exterminate Jerk. them, could we not? J oh. And then we just got to let them be, though. They're just trying to live like you are. What's normal for the fly is something about a spider and a fly, <laughs> and one is good and one is bad for the other. So just remember that next time. Termites, also bad. Pests. That's How do you true. feel about exterminators? Like, so when you drive, drive through town and you see somebody's house being tented for termites, does that thing, does it happen here from Hawaii? We have that happen a lot. Oh, uh, yeah. I usually, I follow them and then I will let air out of their tires. So oh. they truck, while they're in there, <laughs> mass genocide of natural animal. Mass genocide of a natural animal. Take air out of their tires. Well, what are your thoughts on, like, you know, when, when they open up hunting season? Because the deer population, with the deer who eat the cigarette butts, and so that's, that's really very unfortunate. So... You know, but we have an overpopulation of deer, and it's destruct, destroying the environment. And so, you know, hunting season is good for that. So oh, how do you feel about that? Absolutely. Deers are running rampant. They have Lyme disease. They have terrible because things. Because of ticks. Because of ticks. And that's not just affecting humans. That affects other, you know, they eat too much stuff. Now something else can't survive that's natural. <laughs> so I'm all for it. Rainy nature all for on deer conservation. No, on deer population control. R oh, wait. Okay. But that's not natural. Uh, so you gotta, you're, you so gotta, you're a little wishy-washy on this whole waffle. commitment to... You gotta to, waffle. Is this <laughs> Whatever gets ratings. Because conviction is totally not good for ratings. No. No, not at all. You've seen these dailies. Come on. I could, <laughs> so where are you from originally, Ranji Nature? Uh, from... Nature. I mean, nature. aside from nature. Uh, it's in my genes. More, more specific, though, geographically, where are you? Uh, I never met my mother or my father. I was born in... You were raised by wolves. No, no, no. Oh, well, no, no, I was born in an orphanage, and they didn't even want me there. How could you have been born in an orphanage? Well, I don't know. I was born, and I guess they were there. Orphanage. Hey, I'm just going what the guy told me when he sent me out on my own, eight years old, in a knapsack. <laughs> in a knapsack. In a knapsack. So he stuffed you into a knapsack. I, well, I cut holes for my legs. They didn't want to give me clothes there. They just said I, that wasn't very nice. That's, so that's I just I had to live in nature. You, I wasn't raised by wolves. Wolves chase you. Wolves. <laughs> I don't know who people are getting raised by wolves. Wolves don't just take people in. Wolves chase you away. Yeah, they, they sure do. And so you, you left the orphanage at eight in a knapsack, and ever since then you've been bonded with nature and been teaching people about how to conserve it and whatnot. Exactly. All right. Well, you know what, Randy? This has been um, a really useful educational experience having this conversation with you. If there was... Uh, so, Oh, if there was one thing that you could teach me, one thing, one big important lesson about nature that you want me and our viewers to take away from this, what would it be? And don't say, appreciate nature. Um, just from experience, wolves chase you. Well, this is it. You, they don't take people in. I don't know if a single person has <laughs> been raised by wolves. Wolves chase you. How about bears? Bears are okay. Like, you think of like Winnie the Pooh. He's okay, but not like a real bear who also chase you and put your whole head in their mouth. Do they? Well, if you, unless you play dead quick enough. Is that what you do in a bear situation? You've got to play dead play and hope dead. that he doesn't put his whole head, so whole, whole head in his mouth. We avoid wolves because they don't actually adopt children, no. in spite of what all the movies seem to say. Exactly. We had a filmmaker on, the, our earlier guest was, was a filmmaker, 
And so he was telling us about this. We actually, we, it turns out we have your movie talking about filmmakers. Okay. We have your little film, so if we can like take a little look at it. Welcome to Rainy Nature. I'm your host, Randy Nature. Today, we're looking for nature, but we're looking for nature in a place you can't even, didn't even think you were going to find nature, in the name of a place called Small Town. That's right. We're here in the town, in the city, in the streets, to find nature. Nature can be found here. Nature can be found everywhere, because nature's a paradise. So, anywhere there's no nature, is a place I don't want to be. Let's go find some nature. We're looking for nature in a town. We got off to a slow start, so we just kind of had to walk around because we knew we were going to have to find more nature somewhere. So we went to the other side of the street. We're going to see what we can find over there. And we were, when we were on the other side of the street, we found, oh, look in this window, we found a Robert cat. And there's a Robert cat in the window. We're looking for nature in, in small towns. Not as much nature to be found, but still, if you find some nature, here's some nature here. You always find some nature. Craft. Dan Cameraman's going the street where all the nature is. We're gonna have to cross the street. When you cross the street, you gotta look two ways, though. We're gonna make it over just fine. That's how we're doing. We made it just good. We're having a hard time finding nature in the town. But we're never gonna have hope. Never get up hope on nature. We're just gonna go find some other places where we might find some nature. And we're gonna be natural. Let's go! This perfect day. Beautiful day for nature. We couldn't find much nature in the town. So we come to this place called a park. It's made out of nature. You're going to find nature everywhere you look. But that's the case. you got to be safe in nature. So we got to have what's made for nature. It's called a machete. So we're taking... So I guess you can have machetes at the park. Even though the park's made out of nature and it's natural to have machete in nature. Who cares? Let's go look at some nature. The only thing we found in the park was a bunch of snot-nosed childs and offsprings. And if I don't want to get arrested, I'm going to have to get out of here quickly and go to jail. I'm going to have to book it. If you're going to look for animals in nature, you can find them all over. But if you're in a town, you can't, you can't always find animals in nature. That's why we come to this place. It's a, uh, an animal or orphanage. Let's go in and check out some animals. They're natural. It's just dogs. Uh, uh, it turns out the only animals at the animal orphanage are dogs. I don't like dogs. They want me to play with the dog. They say, Randy, it's part of nature. It's just natural. <sighs> this was a dog uh, from the animal orphanage in the name of Ash. He was, uh, uh, he must have had coffee dog food. I don't want to get closer to him. You get close to him. And also, he just wanted to make dudes. Maybe dogs aren't so bad. None of them can even be friendly puppies. Uh, they're just, he's natural. They would just. In our quench for nature, we decided to pop in my old community college and give them a taste of uh, t uh, talking with uh, one of their alumni. Nature can be found anywhere. I'm here in my old alma mater looking for nature and we're going to talk to some kids a guy a student about some nature come on in nature dave gonna come in and talk to us about some nature what do you like about nature what is your favorite color of nature that's a very pretty color tell us about some of your favorite nature walks i've been there many times myself maybe you have a favorite nature animal see nature can be found everywhere even at my old alma mater high school middle school community college so we're, we're walking around the halls trying to find people talk about nature. We find this guy. Let's go see what he has to say about nature. Hey, what do you want to tell us about nature? What are you guys doing in here? Many things can be done to bring nature indoors. This table was what's made out of wood, growing in nature in the fields. That's the table. You know, it says a good lover of nature, Ramstein.
dog dude. It's just part of nature. You gotta find it everywhere you go. It's just natural. It's just, it, it, it's the end of the perfect day of nature. Even in a town, in the city, you can find nature all around. It's just, if you just want to go fishing in nature, enjoy it. This has been a great day. I've been your host, Randy Nature. Coming back on four. Hi, so that was awesome. I learned a lot about nature. Thank you. You all just find nature everywhere. All right, well, thank you so much for being here. We've appreciated you. Thank you for joining us on Spotlight. We will see you next time.